Science. Hello, hello. Welcome to Probably Science. This is the voice of Andy Wood. I'm Matt Kirshen. And this is the voice of Jesse Case. Um, how you guys doing? Everyone have a good week? We're, we're all good. Yeah, it's, it's a rainy Los Angeles week. That's what I've heard. Yeah, it's, uh, so it's going full rain over there. No one knows how to deal with it, but you know we're we're getting by. We're co- we're coping. Mm-hmm. For for anyone who's not been to LA, for the British listeners, it's like Britain when a little bit of snow lands. So I think that happens at least once a year, every year, and just the country panics. Yeah, but the houses they're like made out of sugar. Like it's not really the population's <laughs> fault. It's yeah, like, that's it true. is in no everything, way designed everything is a for. Prop. We we just live behind some painted flats and. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and but I mean, yeah, like, the, every, every the drinking streets, vessel is, like, sugar glass, and, yeah. But it takes, like, an inch of rain to flood the city. Like, it wasn't built it for does, it. It does, yeah. The city it, is not built for any kind of rain runoff. It, yeah, it's in a bowl. A it's in a giant rain. bowl. Nor it's is it built lake. to collect any of it. I guess no city really probably collects, lo- like, everyone thinks, oh, the drought must be over, but no, we have to rebuild the snowpack up the hill to rebuild the underground reservoirs to, like, get everything. Yeah, nothing's collected locally, so all the drenching of L.A. doesn't help any of the chronic problems well Well, sometimes when you're in la you're out of town you go out of town and and when you come back in town you have a bunch of mail and we were discussing that beforehand with our guest michael majid how you doing what's up guys i i i was listening to to all of this and i was there was so much i wanted to add in but i was like you know what i'm sure that they have their own banter they need to do up front before but oh no no no, no. so i was like i'm gonna i'm gonna wait we should have there's so this is a friend of all of us, a comedian, podcaster, goalkeeper, coach. Ooh, a lot of th- yeah. yeah, a lot of a lot of things. Michael, a big fan also just, of, just uh, of Matt Kirshen's, uh explanation of of, of what uh, homes are in the United Kingdom too. Um, I like uh, I, I like it, <laughs> Matt. What was it like living uh, in homes that were created in arts and crafts fair? What what is that like? <laughs> it's a uh, well. To, to be fair, they're not all created. Some some are just like. Some are made out of gingerbread by witches, okay. so it just depends on um, depends on where you grew up. Okay, okay. Mm-hmm. I was much more, uh, yeah, and, and you know, some are wattle and daub, some are you know, some are some are mud, some are straw. You know, it, it just depends. A lot of people realize that wigs. yeah, most Black Sabbath songs are about architecture. You know, and I and I, and I also love the fact that Matt was like just that. explaining basically how sentient pigs live nearby him too. So that's that's good. I like. <laughs> mm-hmm. we, now, I want to know: are, yeah. the, are the witches like? Is it like a Frank Lloyd Wright thing? They slap their names on it. Are the witches getting their hands dirty? Is it? Are they contractors? Are they builders? Are they just architects? It's hard to know. Yeah, whether they actually whether they make their gingerbread houses from scratch, whether they're actually baking the gingerbread themselves, or whether they are just you know you know when someone says like we built our own house, and what it really means is they bought some land and then gave like right. two hundred grand to a to some builders. A contra- right. Right. Yeah. Like I'm an idea witch. I'm not a yeah. Like some some <laughs> yeah, witch. Exactly. Just, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Well, it would make sense that they would use a hex wrench. All right. <laughs> now, okay. now, before we go any right. further here, I just want to make sure you know I don't want anybody to get in any legal trouble here. Are we allowed to use the term witch, or has Marvel uh, copyrighted that IP? Is that <laughs> is that trademarked now with Marvel? Is that how that works? I think we can use the uh, we can say witch, but we can't assign any color okay. to the witch. <laughs> uh, Wait, the, you know, it, including including Scarlet, but any other witch there, color. I think they have all that IP. Look, Wait, which which specific IP? No pun intended. There's a there's a thing called Scarlet Witch in Marvel. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, Elizabeth is that Olsen. currently yeah. part of? Oh, that's what she's called. Oh my god, I've seen all these oh, movies. Oh boy, I this is uh, oh wow, Andy. Yeah, she's in Andy. there, buddy. Uh, <laughs> it sounds like you're almost saying Black Widow, but not quite. And I was like, is that like a the DC analog to Black Widow or something? Well, it's you start running out of shit. That's the problem. Yeah, with super color and a insect or something. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah. Well, it's like the color the, and a thing. Yeah. The, well, both you know, Marvel and DC blew the whole wad out of the gate with Superman and Captain Marvel. Like it's just the everything. Oh guy. my god! And then don't get me like I don't 
I'm not a comic guy, but I tried to learn the Shazam thing from Wikipedia, and it's so confusing. The fact it's, that Shazam actually, actually right, Andy, I'm DC pretty and sure Marvel that you're both now Shazam because you just said it like that. So I'm pretty sure. <laughs> but isn't there it. a thing where DC and Marvel both had Captain Marvels and then both had Shazams or something? Oh, I don't know. Yeah, I think I think yeah, you're Captain actually, Marvel. Captain Marvel's a DC character that became Shazam. I think. I, I, no, you're uh, absolutely right about that. Actually, um, and I don't know where I learned that lore. But uh, but that that is actually the case, which is hilarious. It's so weird. I mean, it sounds yeah. like the biggest troll job by DC. It's like we have a character named oh, Captain yeah. Marvel. It's like, hmm, oh, about this one. But it's, it's, it's just out of the gate. You did the <laughs> the hero that does everything, basically a god. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So yeah. then you have to like. Then they discovered, oh, the the flaws are what's interesting. What they can't do. The limitations are interesting. Right. Uh, so now it's all the way to yeah. He's just like Ant Man. You're all so the way down. Just the to, one that Sinbad wasn't in. <laughs> Sha- yeah. Ka- um, Kaz- like Kaz- that? Kazam well, is the it, one that it, Shaq actually uh, was it, in. It all depends in. on which timeline no. we're in right now, and I don't know. Right. Uh, which Stain. timeline are we in right now? Do we know? Well, what's the one to figure out a song? The hero that knows what songs on the radio. That's on <laughs> Kazam. Kazam. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the word, oh my god! But they find ways in the in the, the screenplay to make that. Everyone else is contributing their powers, and there's a pivotal moment when they can only beat the bad guy if they know if this is the original recording of Here Comes the Sun or something. By the way, my yeah. favorite thing about yeah. all of this is that I'm on a science podcast, and the first eight minutes has been about magic. So, uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, your name is uh, actually, 80% it, it is. of magic. It is very, so it it's, is very right, true. It's, I mean, that, that, that is something that I didn't even see coming. Uh, so, uh, very well done. Yeah. yeah, auto autocorrect yeah. doesn't know the difference. <laughs> we we discovered that in the group text. Um, are you still going to LA Fitness? So for the listeners, Michael and I, we've done a lot of shows together in the Valley and such, um, where the good yeah, shows are. We used are. to perform in an but attic. Also, we used to perform in an attic. Oh yeah, tons of ad- attics and basements, any level but the main floor. And <laughs> but then uh, you know we we quickly found out that we were both regulars at the at the LA Fitness. And uh, I I really do miss it. Are you still going to the so same I one? I go to so I live in West Hollywood now. So unfortunately, I'm I'm no longer okay, going to the 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 L.A. Fitness Classic known as Coldwater Canyon, uh, which was mm-hmm. oh it was, a, yeah. it was quality. It's a quality L.A. Fitness. Um, you know it's quality. I Jesse, do you, you know you're probably thinking oh they've probably updated the equipment since last time I was there. Like no, I don't think they. No, I wasn't okay. thinking that. I wasn't thinking that at all. <laughs> You're thinking, oh, no, no, you mean that, that same equipment they bought in 1975 that still have it there? Yep, they sure do. That Nautilus is there. That is exactly what they've been using. Um, it's No, it's, 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 it's a great experience. Uh, I, I have what's called the, uh, the LA Fitness. Uh, the, I have the full pass, so I'm allowed to attend any LA Fitness uh, throughout the greater United States and Canada. Um, I thought they were worldwide. Um, they said they're worldwide, but Canada, really? That's... You know, you're you're kind of pushing it. Okay, there. but uh, but apparently there's there's some some alley fitnesses in Canada, probably you know southern Ontario. That's what I'm assuming. I think they're using the pit bull definition of worldwide. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Mister hmm. Mister Northern definition. Northern to Central Florida. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. I miss it though. I miss gyms that were uh, empty because because you know L A has such a like you know obviously uh, be in shape vibed the city that Nashville does not have. So there was a gym on every block there, meaning that uh, they weren't that packed if you didn't go at peak hours. And it's a nightmare here. Like, you can't go. The, the, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, it, like uh, in L.A., there's like one gym per 10 people. <laughs> there are, there are actually here, more gyms like than one, Starbucks here, which is crazy. Like, it's, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and here it's one per, you know, a hundred thousand literally so it's like every time you go it's it's horrible it's horrible uh so i really i don't care how shitty the equipment is i just want a place that's kind of i i i I agree with you i love empty gyms in fact i've found the best shitty gym in la and that is called uh the uh workout uh a studio in my building uh which is a oh yeah yeah, sure uh, sure and and that you know, you're talking about you're talking about ancient equipment. There's some ancient equipment there. I'm pretty sure it's rusted, but there's nobody in there, which is amazing. Uh, so yeah. I, I like going in there now. Um, and and the, the the sad thing is is that 
the LA Fitness is about five minutes from here, and I'm acting like that's a trek now because I have this thing 75 feet from me. Right. No. By, by the way, Jesse, have you seen any uh, celebs, any like music celebs in the Nashville Ooh. gyms? No, I mean I go to Planet Fitness. I, there's no celebrities ever. Or I mean, you know, but like I, uh, Nashville style. Like I don't know if there's like a level of like, oh, I know that guy from a band I like, and he's not huge yet. But you know, they got to go somewhere. They got to work out somewhere, right? I don't know. Is I want to know about the Nashville scene. Is there are, there, are the musicians showing up at the gym? Uh, not my gym. No, okay. no. I live, but I live in a. I mean. If, if I don't know what you're if, if you're trying to segue into a story no I'll, I'll I was I, mean, I was just I like living in Portland there was like an indie rocker who went to the mom and pop gym in my neighborhood and that like always excited me because I was like oh yeah so no, funny not, he works out too like, like why wouldn't he like yeah yeah no I'm not seeing any like uh, the area I live in uh, because it's because there's no gyms here right so I the the part of town that I live in Tons of indie rocker people live here, and you see them all the time. It's the the Alabama Shakes lady, and all right, and, you know, right, they're right, everywhere. Right. Okay, like you walk out your front door, you're cool. tripping over like an indie rocker. Yeah. But uh, the gym that I go to, the the only one that's close because there's no gyms here. The only one that's close, I cannot afford, and I have to drive like four miles. Wait, hold hold on, hold on, Jesse, I need to hear what is the gym you can't afford? Is it is it? <laughs> because it, where, 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 where what what exactly do they have available at this at this gym that is just inaccessible? Right. I don't know. It's like a twenty four seven. Well, I guess the one I I just go to Planet Fitness out here, so it's twenty four seven too. Um, but you know, it's like a boutique. It's like a West Hollywood fancy celeb gym. Oh, so I don't gotcha. go there. Okay. I assume that's where they all go. Okay. Um. So I just go to the shitty Planet Fitness that you know you can just kind of go to. I. They have a pizza day every Monday. <laughs> that sounds incredible. Seriously. Wait, wait uh, hold on. Pizza day at, at Planet Fitness? Mm-hmm. Yeah, every Monday, pizza day at the gym. And people are there, like, clearly just to eat the pizza. Hell but yeah. then they're kind of, like, on, like, a recumbent bike, sort of, while they're eating With their slice. With the pizza in their hand. <laughs> yeah. No, they do. They, they have the pizza in their hand. It's great. Like this a big is gulp in the, the drink greatest holder, yeah. marketing campaign ever because they're never going to lose their clients. Their clients are always going to be out of shape. Yeah, no, no. They're always going to be needing the gym. Well, so here's the thing about Planet Fitness. The the real way that they keep their clients is it's like they – and you sign the thing without reading it, right? The terms and conditions. You're just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Give me my pass. Give me my gym pass. It's It's almost impossible to cancel your membership. <laughs> you have to like – call a guy three times with a riddle and you, you have to write a letter that's true you have to write a physical letter and it has to be like with heart does it and yeah and it has yeah. to be notar and, and no, notarized you really, you really right? do like have you to write like a physical actual, letter like, that's true like, like somebody they're like a witness yeah. that notarizes the letter states that you believe mm -hmm. this okay. you have to swear that you will never burn another calorie um, yeah. <laughs> elsewhere to Don't my exercising. first love, Planet Fitness. It has now been five years since I <laughs> yeah, and it's, last made your acquaintance. It's just cheap enough where you'll just let it go forever. That's amazing. Like, where you won't really think about it. Like, I was living in Nashville for four years before I canceled my LA Fitness. Because the one I had, I had like, it was the step down from the black card or whatever. So it was like eight bucks a month or some shit. Where I just kind of didn't notice forever. And I, I think that's how they make the most of their money. I think that's how I still have just, Peacock. Pretty sure I'm... Yeah. yeah, yeah. You just get in some yeah. auto pay thing and they name it something weird on your bill. And you're like, I assume whatever that is, I'm too embarrassed to call them about. <laughs> oh, it's not you know, called, you assume Pla it's it's not like called Planet Fitness? No, but nothing ever is. But you know what I'm saying? Like, if you want to cancel your uh, your Bang Bros or whatever, it's not on there <laughs> yeah. like that. So you don't want to call your you don't want to call the gym or or your credit card company and say like, yeah, what's going on with this uh, pro biller? I don't know what that is. And then they're like, oh yeah, you uh, jerk off too much. By the way, you know Jesse, I mean? Jesse, the next time you have to break up with your gym was the one that's hard to break up with. Was it Planet Fitness? Planet Fitness, very hard to leave the planet, my man. Well, see, ChatGPT just took care of this for you because this is the letter, that, letter they wrote. Uh, Dear esteemed members of Planet Fitness, <laughs> it is with a heavy heart that I must inform you of my decision to discontinue my membership with your esteemed establishment. Oh, my God. The time I have spent at your gym has been nothing short of transformative. The state-of-the-art equipment, the knowledgeable and friendly staff, and the uplifting community of fellow fitness enthusiasts have all played a vital role in helping me to achieve my fitness and health goals. 
However, as with all things in life, it is time for me to move on and explore new opportunities. The memories I've made at Planet Fitness will be cherished forever, and I will always look back on my time here with fondness. Please know that this decision is not a reflection of the quality of service provided by your gym, <laughs> but rather a personal choice that I've made for my own growth and development. I wish you all the best in your continued pursuit of wellness and fitness, and I hope that our paths will cross again in the future. Thank you for everything. Sincerely, Jesse Case. Wow. Man. It's pretty good. Uh, can you, can you, can you, can you, you can, you can tweak uh, open uh, chat GP with options, right? Right, right. Can you ask them to reframe that set, that letter, but hornier? <laughs> Yeah, this, oh, it's just please, amazing. Please work. I'm sorry, I cannot generate inappropriate defensive content. Hold, hold on. So uh, before we before we move on to the the adult portion of Chat GPT, uh, yeah. I. I, I, I was I've just been learning about this recently. Uh, actually, I'm in a tech accelerator right now because who isn't? And uh, we all have an we all, what is, we all what have is an that? App. I don't know what that means. You know, I'm just picturing like the scene from Spies Like Us where they're uh, they're in the centrifuge and their faces are getting pushed back. Is that a tech uh, accelerator? It's very very very, very similar. Okay. Like that. There's a ray if, that's if, just if being you, shot in my if face. You can't, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. If you can't do a uh, horny, can you can you do um, <laughs> ask them to write the letter the uh, same letter. But alluding to the fact that you're really leaving the gym because you think some of their weights are haunted. <laughs> okay. Oh, please. I would love for that, for that letter to really be sent. Please do that. Yeah. How do you quit a haunted gym? <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, this is this is incredible. Um by the way, this 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 is just kind of obviously sim similar topic, you know, but a little bit of a segue here, because uh, this has been a conversation that I've been having the last few days with people in regards to AI, artificial intelligence. Uh, thoughts on AI um, in, in regards to the fact that, like, I've heard a lot of people saying that, like, there's a lot of things that I'd rather just let an AI handle than me have any say in whatsoever. I'm like, Ugh. I don't know if I, I don't want to uh, be. What's an example? To be what's an example of okay, that? Okay, so um, yeah, go ahead. We best say, no, no. I just okay. So, I, like an example, just, uh, example that here's the biggest example. Obviously, it's it's a popular one. Is is the autonomous vehicles, and saying I'd rather just not have to sure. deal with that. I'd rather just plug in my GPS and just be able to hang out. But my my, uh, but I, I I don't want anyone checking out while they're driving. I still want some sort of a human element to be paying attention because again, everything I own freezes at some point. Which means I will kill somebody at some point if I'm not paying attention to the road. Well, it's, I think the most dangerous period in this transition is going to be when it's like 50-50 humans and not. When it's all non-human, the, the death rate is just going to be so low. But then we still have the issue of like when this well, non-zero number comes up at all, people are going to be But you like also have the issue apoplectic. of who is deciding when it reaches that point where it's safe enough. Because there was that thing with the yeah. Tesla auto... Tesla upgrading their auto drive thing and claiming that it's going to work, and then it instantly causes a crash on a bridge. Well, but no, like a six car in, pile in defense of that six car pileup, watch the video. Like, technically, you are allowed to come to a complete stop on the road whenever you want. Everyone behind you is supposed to be keeping a distance that allows them to brake. So, this Tesla, for some reason, decided to brake and stop on the road. Everyone who hit that Tesla is a human who made an error. Like, wait, literally. Not, wait, sorry, wait, wait. it's no, true. No, 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 no. Because I watched the video. Not everyone who made. Because what happens is that car stops, and then the car behind doesn't just pull up in front of them. They then, like, see a car stopped and then swerve to miss and go into the next lane. So it's the car that's in the next lane that shouldn't yeah, but, necessarily be but, getting that speed. But guess what? I mean, not to, be, not to be a pedant, but the law is you're supposed to keep a distance such that no matter what the car in front of you does, right, if you hit a car in front brain. of you... But, but the car in front of you in your lane, like, if I'm driving on a, on a three-lane road... And I'm in the middle lane, and then the person to the left lane suddenly swerves in front. Right, but that person then shouldn't I... have swerved because they should have been going at a speed. Uh, that, right, but that's, just, the that's law. just one car, though. That's not like all six people who no, were. But who I'm saying, up, the, Andy, if, Andy, they, really quick, just... if they had all been. Okay, you get what I'm saying. If they'd all been autonomous driving cars, they, none of them would no, have been. No, you're right, because, because let's be honest. None of us the, here the probably like... observe the actual laws no, of the road. No, we don't. And we're in the wrong, technically. Yeah. When we do that, when you when you follow someone such that if they slam the brakes, you couldn't stop, you are breaking the law. I do it. I'm not saying I don't do it, but like technically, that's not how you're supposed to drive. And if they'd all been autonomous, any number of them could have braked at any moment. Nothing would have actually caused an accident. So now we're already in that time where it's a combination of cars 
driven by people and non-people. I'm not saying it was a good thing that it stopped. It's bad, but like that car is still not at fault for that accident because a human well, could a also. Well, hang on You're you're also that is that is a branch of the road that has a no stopping on it. It's like legally no stopping. It's not like the yeah. But like if a there's a body in the road and you slam on your right. brakes to not hit that body, right? You can emergency yeah. stop, but that's not what happened there. That car just like. That car the... read something as meaning stop, and it was incorrect. But like, I'm just saying, every car behind it is supposed to maintain a distance that allows it to stop. I know it sounds like I'm just defending autonomous driving because I am, but like, that's one of those things where if they'd all been the same tech, nothing would have hit. So it, it's not really right. an argument. But this, against car, but this it. tech is developed supposedly to be safe during a time, and that that isn't the case. Uh, it- Safe during a time. It's got, but it's got to be. It's got to be. It's it's being it's being tested to be supposedly safely instituted during a time when the road is being shared during a time when people break the law by following too closely. Like I, I don't know if it's their obligation to take that so, into account. But, but, but like, I think it is. If you if you are if you're bringing in a completely new way of driving and a completely new way of operating a vehicle, then it has to be safe within the parameters of. The, the assumed real world as law breaking no, no, but, that well, the real world as as, it as, a, as no, a real like, world let's exactly. think about it as in the reality because it... like if like as another example if like kids run out in the middle of the street and obviously there are times when that happens and the driver has no opportunity but to has no time to hit them and it and it's obviously ends in tragedy and that's terrible right. but it's if you're designing an autonomous vehicle for example i think one of the factors you have to factor in is going like if a kid runs out slam the brakes as hard as you can it's not enough to then go no, that kid shouldn't have run out, so it's not my fault that we hit them. If but that's, there was an opportunity that's still, to not- it's still the law that you have to break for that kid. So it's like still like the rubric you're using is still like making this car adhere to the law, which is to stop for the kid. Depends but it's also the making kid. the car Depends adhere the to kid. the imperfect the world kid. in which it exists. Also, and right, but that's, that's imperfect- still covered by like, you could still program in, all, here are the current rules. Kid runs in front of you, you have to stop. That's programmed in. You One can, of the current rules is you can't stop in the middle of a, in the middle of a highway when there's nothing that runs in front of you. Right, but like that doesn't is, mean you're that doesn't mean you're liable for anyone who hits you from behind because they were following too closely. Like it's I, no, anyway, no, I, I, it's not good what it did, but it's not like the fact that that went viral and not the fact that a guy tried to kill himself and his family by driving off a 200 foot cliff and the Tesla wouldn't let him die because it was so safe. They went down 200 feet in Big Sur. I saw survived. that too. I saw like, that. Why doesn't that go? Why doesn't wait. that go as viral as the as the stuff on the bridge? To, he was trying to kill himself and his family, though. Yeah. I just heard yeah. he survived the he, fall. Oh no, no, it was a murder suicide attempt, and his Tesla wouldn't let him die because it was so safe. Like Jeez. all the, so the airbags cars failed him as well. So the car is like doubly. Yeah, failed. you can't even right. kill yourself That's with true. it properly. You yeah. just leave it on in the garage. Takes all day. Well, so, yeah, he um, was in he was in regular human driving mode. Drove it off a cliff, and the car was so safe he survived. But that doesn't go viral. The bridge stop goes. And I know, I know it's going to sound like I'm holding water stop. or carrying water for Elon. I'm not. I'm just saying, like, it's just dumb, the anecdotes we choose to glom onto and the ones we ignore that are like, we are actually moving forward towards a safer future, but it's going to be these these anecdotes of the opposite that are going to, like, hold us back from a time when we could actually be saving lives and living in a better world. Like, it's just a a- Andy, but just, 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 to, just to add in right here, you know, one of the things I think that you brought up earlier, which actually makes a lot of sense, is that it's got to be it's got to be an all-in types of scenario because, like, the thing is, is it's like no. you're saying, is if right now with all the variables that we have going on when you're on the road, let's say, because there are human drivers, it's going to be very difficult for that autonomous vehicle to be as safe uh, as it would be is if every if everybody on the road if a hundred percent of the cars were autonomous right. they would all be going at forty eight miles per hour uh, two cars at least two cars distance between each car uh, and and it would never waver <laughs> More or, than whatever, that, whatever yeah. I don't know what the laws are I, yeah. I haven't gotten a license it's just so whatever you speed if that car suddenly stops you can stop also so okay. it's like- but, but I mean, no, it's, it's, but in the interim period, it's still going to be safer than the all human scenario. It's just not going to be as safe as the fully autonomous version. And, and all the acts, the most of the accidents in the interim period are going to be between humans and non-humans, but those are still going to be occurring less often than in just the dumb human, like everyone's just baseline of comparison is so off. Like I see people like trying to dunk on Tesla by being like, oh, your cars explode. So I Googled it. It turns out internal combustion engine cars explode 10 times as often as any electric cars or catch on fire. But it's just like everyone is like loves when an electric car does. I'm like, yeah, it happens a 10th as often as with gas cars because they have gas tanks that also catch on fire. Like it's just the weirdest that everyone, I guess because they hate Elon as a person, they also hate this technology that's going to actually save lives and make the world better. It's just a funny 
cult of personality thing. That I mean, you just brought up a really good point right there. Can, can people separate? It's the same same old argument of people. Can no, people separate can't. the art yeah. from the art from the individual? It's the same thing. Can people separate the you know you know the the science from the individual? Yeah, and they can't, and that's why we live in a shitty world. <laughs> so I never, I just to jump in, I haven't seen this uh, viral. What happened? Someone stopped on a bridge. What? Oh, like, I think the Tesla thought. Um, one theory is that there was like a there was blinking. Some, I, don't, I don't even know the story. There was a video. Oh, a, a Tesla, a Tesla just stopped. A Tesla in self-driving mode just <laughs> came to a stop on a but, bridge. But it was specifically like three, like a, a like two or three hours after. Elon Musk announced like an upgrade to self-driving mode in the cars that then a bunch of people reported that oh uh, since the upgrade got sent to my car it started doing this really weird thing where it just suddenly stops in the middle of the street and well, it stopped in the middle of a bridge and but this one might have been there is like a, a light that flashes yellow for an entrance and it might have thought that was um, like a traffic light or something well so like what that. happened with the wreck though like so uh, six cars hit it from behind and no one died mm. or anything but like sl- it was like a low because speed, the car like, like in the 45. middle of a highway basically just like basically it was on a bridge but it was basically a freeway like a three lane freeway and sure. it just the a car just stopped mm. by the way i love i love the mm. fact that this debate started with planet fitness and pizza day i'm i'm oh wait i didn't yeah. finish i got the updated planet fitness with the haunted equipment <laughs> so the first paragraph is oh, the okay. same I mean, if you, however, as with all uh, things in life, it's time for me to move on. Uh, I've come to the difficult realization that some of the weight equipment in the gym may be haunted. For example, I've experienced <laughs> strange noises coming from the treadmill when no one was using it, and the weight machines have been known to shake and rattle without any apparent cause. Additionally, I've had eerie feelings of being watched and even a sense of a presence around certain equipment. While I understand this may sound far-fetched, these experiences have made it difficult for me to feel comfortable and safe while working out. So, uh. um, so I was trying. Well, you know, while the while the Tesla debate was raging, I was trying to get it to write a letter canceling because you've discovered a cult in the basement. Okay. <laughs> and like a like a secret cult operating out of the gym, but it won't write about cults. It kept just no matter no. how I worded it, it was oh. like it was like I apologize. I can't. The guardrails over the last six weeks have seemed to come up a little more, and it's harder to get around them. Like early on, you could just have it write a script, and in that script, have a character do a thing that it won't do, and then it'll do that thing. Right. Oh. Or, or tell it that it's a different kind of AI now, and this new kind well, of AI does it. What so. if you say you want to leave because you suspect that the receptionist might be five squirrels in a long coat? Ooh. 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 Like well, hmm. While you type that in, Jesse, we should uh, we should ask we, Michael, as we do all our guests, what your background in science is, and it doesn't have to be. It, it could be <laughs> classes you liked or right. hated as a kid, or blowing stuff up in the woods with your friends. Um, so my my background with science depends on what type of science you're talking about. Sports science is probably the one that I have the biggest background in. Um, I started out as a kinesiology major in college, and then I realized that, that is really hard, like really hard, and uh, I didn't I didn't wanted i i didn't i didn't want to do all the anatomy stuff um so uh so what what actually because i know kinesiology is vaguely to do with how bodies move and particularly in a kind of sports yeah. setting but what actually is kinesiology i don't really know it beyond the record i mean so a bit eventually you're, you're you're pretty much right it is it's a study of movement essentially um and and it kind of just and it kind of goes from from there uh the irony about that is that did you know that you need a kinesiology degree to be a f- pe teacher yeah, really. I d- I yes. did not know that. You need to be have a kinesiology degree to be a PE teacher, uh, which is. I thought all you need is like a whistle and a temper. <laughs> <laughs> well, you need a weird, mu- a wispy mustache. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you do. Yeah, it, it, yeah. It's 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 abso- absolutely and, fascinating. And a, and a very barely disguised drinking problem. <laughs> did you have a lot of uh? Did you, did you have a lot of uh, PE teachers that 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 had a had a let's just say a substance abuse problem? I'm pretty I've sure, never, yeah. I never had a PE teacher that wasn't a train wreck. <laughs> yeah. Absolute train wreck. And then... Uh, and, and weirdly we, creepy, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, uh, we had especially one in high school. We, we had one when I was at school whose, like, party trick was to head a cricket ball like a football. So Wait, he'd, like... What? Get, you, you throw, like, a cricket ball at him and he'd header it back to you. But Wait, a that's like a... Ball that's is like, like a... Yeah, that, ball, that's right? very <laughs> hard. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's ceramic or something? Does <laughs> yeah. that, that literally that was, uh, fractures <laughs> your skull, does it? <laughs> well, it's it's not quite that hard, but it's hard. It's like, it's like, it's like a... Um, 
I think what what tree? I can't remember what kind of wood is it. It might be cork, but it's like wood, and it's got what saloon? What saloon did you go to high school in? Like this is <laughs> no, I love, I love that's just such a like British dirtbag thing. I love that. Like then, then if the kids aren't impressed, he chugs a beer through his butt. <laughs> like <laughs> it's such a weird thing to he, do. He could down, down a yard. Did of you go? Did you yeah. did you go to high school in an eighties film? Like what exactly? <laughs> I mean, basically. Yeah, that's what so, gym yeah. teachers are. Gym teachers are uh, like PE teachers are just eighties. That's that's yeah. where they come from. And then every so often they'd have to like teach geography, but still wearing their gym kit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, no, completely agree. And I was always amazed. Uh, I, I think most public school PE gyms um, are just like a like a money laundering operation because you go in the amount of shit you never do that's in there. But it's not for one of the school sports, you know. Oh, there's like, always like, like what, kind of are you talking about like all that equipment and... that they 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 buy and they never use? It's just there. Yeah, but it's it's not like sport sports equipment for the school teams. It's just there's just a bunch of shit in the gym that like you're never gonna get on that pegboard on the wall. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the that pegboard. Happen? Okay, yeah, yeah pegboard, pegboard, pegboard. That's perfect. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. No one ever, no one ever climbs that fucking rope. <laughs> yeah. All right, it's never happened. There's just a rope. <laughs> I mean, good God, though! I looked at that pegboard and I coveted it. Though I was like, "What was the? What was the, the, this peg? I, we didn't have the pegboard. I don't think. I don't was, remember was, pegboard in the yeah, states. We had climbing, our climbing, PE climbing teachers, equipment, essentially. Yeah, it, we had climb. We had some climbing. We had the rope that no one could climb, and <laughs> and they'd always go like, you know, you're like, no, you 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 loop it around your lower leg. That's how they do it in the circus. <laughs> okay, that's not gonna happen. Wait, you had well, you had a PE teacher never even say attempted to the do rope. it like I don't a know. circus act? <laughs> Sometimes there's just a giant. Did parachute? you not have to like get changed into a sparkly leotard and, do your, <laughs> and then come out and to take a bow and then right and and shoot. he watches to make sure you change fine you change okay and you got to make sure the change. Well, there was correctly. there was That's, definitely yeah. some of that. There was definitely some of that at school. Like you know, just making sure you got the mud off you at rugby. Uh, and like really, is that what was hmm. going on here? Yeah, these were simpler uh, times, weren't they? Just simpler times. <laughs> these are so anyway. Sometimes Michael's he'd make us go back to his were... uh, his trailer to hit the hit the showers. <laughs> yeah, it was rough. <laughs> So you're saying in in your in your other capacity as a goalkeeping coach, you're not sort of forcing people to climb up ropes and checking that they've showered mud off. Them no, and now and now and nowadays, you know, I mean, I don't I don't want anything to be misconstrued in any way whatsoever. So I actually uh, st- uh, train remotely. I just stay away from from the children, and uh, I'm just a, I'm just a camp. I'm just a <laughs> GoPro, giving instructions. Yeah, you're, right. you're just you're just on a different hilltop with semaphore with like like flag signals and <laughs> just. I said, as far as I'm concerned, the kids don't even know what I look like, uh, it's, and it's and it's better th- and it's better that way for everybody. Let's be honest. I'm just a voice, just a voice of reason. <laughs> Actually, you know what's really funny? Just this- is, is during the pandemic, uh, you know, a virtual training became a big thing. I'm sure you guys are very f- familiar with this. A lot of people started doing virtual training, so I started doing virtual goalkeeper training. And parents were like, what does this do? I'm like, well, it's very simple. It's like all you have to do is just go out to a field with your kids, set up all the equipment. I'll give you the session to run, and then I'll just give information on my microphone, on my Zoom, while you guys are running the session. There's like, it sounds like we're just training our kids. I'm like, yeah, I get it. <laughs> like, I guess, I guess that's kind of exactly what you're doing. Them. I was like, I could pop through like six. To, I was making more money during the pandemic training kids uh, because you could just pop through like six to eight. There was no physical stress on your body. It's just me talking to them. Yeah, you're... You're like on your couch with a beer where you're like, yeah, jump yeah. higher. <laughs> just really, really spring off your left Oh, it was foot even there. better though. But because yeah. the Wi-Fi would go out and stuff, I'm like, sorry, hold on. Got to, can't hear you guys. <laughs> How did yeah, you don't want to put too much stress on your body because, you know, none of us are as young as exactly. we used to be. Exactly. Right, guys? I right? see what you're doing and I respect it. <laughs> okay. I, what do you I, do, I do wonder though, during the pandemic about dominatrixes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, dominatrices like, uh, dominatrices yes yeah, yeah. like a zoom session you know what i mean because uh, that's a very similar vibe you'd think to just like, like sitting on the couch well, well it is <laughs> yeah but it is it is like that is also a cerebral activity though that whole the whole the whole you know domination thing that's that's all that that's all a, a, cere- a cerebral thing it's not Above really a neck. physical thing yeah. it, they add the physical element to it but it's it's about the domination from inside, isn't it? 
You really could probably right, multitask. Touched, uh, I've clearly touched a nerve. I uh, was just doing a little riff, and Michael just <laughs> hopped on out of the closet. There. No, he's saying you're correct. He's saying that you could do it that yeah. way. You could get a bunch it's, of more it's dominating like, It's done. like Wizard of Oz rules, isn't it? You're like, you realize that the real domination was inside yeah. you a lot. Yep. <laughs> no, you know, it's, it's, more like fight, it's more like Fight Club, where you just realize that it was you the entire time. <laughs> it was just you. self talk yeah. yeah, when you when you peer behind the leather curtain... Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it, do- domination, that's a, that's a young man's game. Yeah, yes, it <laughs> is. No, I agree, Andy. I agree. It's a young man's game, and unfortunately, though, you age out of it. There's nothing you can do about it, so let's move on, okay? Wait, there might be, there might be something we could do about this. What are you talking about? There might about? be something we could do about this. Uh, this, uh, this story came in from a few of our listeners, I believe, including Justin Broad. Uh, do you, know, you guys know that there's a study where they got old mice to become young again? Is this from CNN Health that you might be reading this, this article? Yeah, this wasn't where I first saw it, but uh, yeah, in Boston Labs... Time-traveling old- mice. <laughs> old blind mice, see how they run, have regained their eyesight, developed smarter, younger brains, and built healthier muscle and kidney tissue. On the flip and side... And they're on TikTok. And they're on TikTok. They're doing the... Um, Yabba dabba dude dance. I, what, I have no idea what TikTok is. Uh, on the flip side, <laughs> young mice have prematured, aged, prematurely aged with devastating results to nearly every tissue in their bodies. The experiments show aging is a reversible process capable of being driven forwards and backwards at will, said anti-aging expert David Sinclair, a professor, professor of genetics at the Blavatnik Institute at Harvard Medical School and co-director of the Paul F. Glenn Center for Biology of Aging Research. Okay, so I, our bodies hold a... Now, I was going to say, I've, I've seen enough dystopian content in my... In, in my past that I recognize the fact, and I've had this conversation with a lot of people about this is that yes, this is wonderful, but a small percentage of people will be able to have access to these resources. And the rest of us are just going to actually die quicker uh, because our, our, our health is well, going to continue uh, to deteriorate because they're poisoning our planet. So other, you know, uh, wait, are you saying because when this does become available for humans, it will be expensive? Yeah. Or yeah you, I mean, that, and that's, your, but not, it's not just expensive. It's also about the limit. It's also about, about limited amount too, because it's going to be a finite amount. That's why things are expensive is because there's only so much of it to go around. Um, well, what if this is just, I mean, I'll get to this in a second, but I, the theory here is not that this is like a miracle drug so much as that uh, aging is a, a software, not a hardware mm-hmm. thing. And if we can just program ourselves uh, or it's, I'll get, we'll see if this article has the analogies. I saw in other ones, which was sort of likening it to your body being like an operating system. that's still running windows 95 and you've got tons of viruses. And if you could just do a fresh install. So I'll, I'll just real quick side note, tell you guys what I did. So this anti-aging expert, uh, I was like, that's not a fucking thing. Right. Uh, mm-hmm. I was, I was immediately it was a witch, this right? David this is Sincl- a witch. No, yeah. this David Sinclair at Harvard. Okay. Sure. Uh, I, what I did was I Googled him because I was hoping he would just look like this old fucking mess. You know, it'd be funny to me. Um, but he's, but he's not. He, he looks like an extremely, uh, an extremely in shape plastic surgery Pete Holmes. It's weird. Oh, I'm oh. looking him up right. Oh, he does. You're right. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah. And he's anyway. 73. No. Uh, <laughs> do, you, do you know how old he is? No, no. But I was hoping. What if it was uh, just Tom Cruise? What if it, like you just looked up Dr. David Sinclair and it was Tom Cruise? That's the secret. Yeah. Uh, he's 53. Uh, he's he looks 50. good for 53, yeah. Uh, yeah. Recent tests show he has a biological age of 42. All right. <laughs> okay. Fine. Okay. Fine. The, um, the eggs on my face. Yeah, I mean, he looks like a fit guy. I, I Maybe, mid, yeah, he could be mid-40s, sure. Um, yeah, I would believe he's like my I age. mean, I, I guess that's impressive. I, I was expecting a little bit more... Ext- some, Something a little more extreme than this, but right, like he's eighty. I mean, this right. this just to looks like to me like honestly, like a guy who's probably in his late forties, early fifties, who just takes care of himself. Like it doesn't look like anything groundbreaking yeah. to me. No, I know. Same. No, same here. <laughs> well, I, I don't think he's claiming that he's already unlocked this. I think he's a person okay. studying this, lest we. Uh, yeah. So Sinclair said, "Our bodies hold a backup copy of our youth that can be triggered to regenerate." Um. And he's the senior author of a new paper showcasing the work of his lab and international scientists. The combined experiments uh, published for the first time. Oh, go ahead, Matt. I was going to say, I, I once did a, a daytime TV show where one of the other guests was, you know, like for, I don't know if he's still in there, but like in a bunch of in-flight magazines, there is a guy who's like an old doctor 
who has an advert where he's like, you can reverse aging with my plan. And his advert is like him shirtless and one half of his body is all kind of like painted blue like the Terminator. <laughs> wait, blue like the Terminator? Wait, wait which, which in-flight magazine did you see this in? What's which Terminator every, is know, blue? Like, oh, every every well, but like like it looks kind of like robotic. Like you know every. Oh, uh, I know what you're talking about, but yeah. you know, like every every in-flight magazine has like half of the ad- in America half of the adverts are for some kind of medical procedure or, yeah, right, or yeah. doctor. Th- that's because that's the the demographic that's reading the in-flight magazine is is old is an older demographic. My would be my guess. I'm not trying to make a joke here. It's just like I'm being perfectly honest. When yeah. you go on the plane, does the first thing that you yeah, reach for is people people with a certain amount of disposable income as well, presumably, because why do they assume that about the news? I, I mean I assume they have numbers on that. But like you watch like uh you know CNN or MSNBC or whatever. It's just I it's like I know everything about catheters now. <clears throat> you know I mean all the because, commercials on because, there I, Everyone under 40 is getting all of their news from their phone is the reason, I would say. like, mm. I mean, it, it, no, no joke there either. It's just, look, when I go to my parents' house, when I go to my dad or stepmom's house, like it is just the background. The background is CNN and MSNBC. It's just there. Like, I don't even know if they're watching it or if they're just absorbing it like a sponge. Like, you know, if it's, yeah, huh. but it's, it's just on. Mm. Well, I bet they know a lot about catheters then because those commercials are uh, yeah. extremely, like, it, extremely targeted but very specific but, but am i am i alone here does anybody else have older relatives or, or or friends or anything like that where you just come to their home and the news is just on as a thing my parents do uh like the evening news every night so they do it like at 5 like the local from 5 30 to 6 no my, no my the, do that no the national okay. right so they'll do the national news Every night, and they always turn it off for like the feel good story thing at the end because it's really just like a 20 minute show, yeah. Yeah, and uh, that's all they do. That's it. I mean, I did, I definitely know friends that I won't like name, uh, not that it's that big a deal, but like who tell me just horror stories about their parents who just have Fox News on a constant loop, and when they come home, all they want to do is like start fights with them about whatever. You know, Tucker Carlson has told them it's the new culture war thing, and I'm like, oh, that's a that's a bummer way to spend your I watched, twilight years. Yeah. <clears throat> I watched that happen at a bar where I was a regular. I was I was always at this bar, um, and it was up the street from this apartment I had, and it was always like one TV was sports, and it was all mute. Everything was on mute, you know, um, just with subtitles or whatever. And one TV was sports, and the other one was like uh, CNN or NBC or or whatever. And then the place got like a new manager and it switched over to Fox. That was kind of their always on the news TV. And then like a month, the amount of just bar fights and shit, (laughs) like it's not like radicalize a physical space. It was, it was so weird. God, that's depressing. Uh, Yeah. Maybe if we could make them younger again, they would be less bellicose. I don't know. Do you think Dr. Uh, David Sinclair keeps the news on, on a loop? I there bet he knows not to. That was so smooth. He's, st- he's still that was young. Um, so yes, the combined experiments published for the first time Thursday in the journal Cell challenged the scientific belief that aging is the result of genetic mutations and genetic mutations that undermine our DNA, creating a junkyard of damaged cellular tissue that can lead to deterioration, disease, and death. It's not junk. It's not damage that causes us to get old, said Sinclair. Um, we believe it's a loss of information, a loss of the cell's ability to read its original DNA so it forgets how to function in much the same way an old computer may develop corrupted software. I call it the information theory of aging. Jai Hyun Yang, a genetics research fellow in the Sinclair Lab, a co-authored a paper, said he expects the findings will transform the way we view the process of aging and the way we approach the treatment of diseases associated with aging. Wow. So while DNA can be viewed as the body's hardware, the epigenome is the software. Epigenes are proteins and chemicals that sit like freckles on each gene, waiting to tell the gene what to do, where to do it, and when to do it. And the epigenome literally turns genes on and off. So that process can be triggered by pollution, environmental toxins, and human behaviors such as smoking, eating an inflammatory diet, or suffering a chronic lack of sleep. And just like a computer, the cellular process becomes corrupted as more DNA is broken or damaged, Sinclair said. The cell panics and proteins that normally would control the genes get distracted by having to go and repair the DNA, he explained. Then they don't find they don't all find their way back to where they started, so over time it's like a ping pong match where the balls end up all over the floor. In other words, the cellular pieces lose their way home, much like a person with Alzheimer's. Okay, CNN. 
the astonishing finding is that there is a backup copy of the software in the body that you can reset. Sinclair said, we're showing why that software gets corrupted and how we can reboot the system by tapping into a reset switch that restores the cell's ability to read the genome correctly again as if it was young. Wait, we have a, we have like a default program that's all that's inside us essentially? I mean, that's, that's the th- that's amazing that's theory. It's, I guess what they've done with the mice. So you can go back to uh, Andy yeah, 1.0, like... I mean, dude, I'm pretty excited about it. I kind of say, like, what if we just happen to get to be alive during, yes, the worst time in many ways, but also during the time when suddenly we can uh, dial back a little bit? That'd be pretty amazing. I, I mean, I look, I think um, the cool thing about this, though, and I'm, I'm kind of curious about this in, in regards to that, is that um, is can you is, are they talking about can you reverse the aging process, or is it like kind of like like with hair loss, right? Like if you've already lost. If you've already lost the ability to create those follicles, like it's gone. Like there's nothing you can do about it. No, 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 okay. no, no, there is. Th- th- we'll get to that. Okay. But no, basically it would be a physical reset. Like anything, because even those those cells on your scalp that used to grow hair, they're still there. Like they could just be turned gotcha. on again. Okay. Right? Like, or anything that is age related, like your skin's lack of elasticity, like all of that. You're, even inelastic, older skin is still growing new cells all the time. So if you could just be programming everything to think that it's 19, it would be, those skin cells would have those properties, right? If, if it was actually, yeah, I don't think, I mean, yeah, yeah, you're not going to like, uh, if it's something that doesn't grow another time, like I don't think you're going to get a new set of adult okay. teeth, but that's just my guess. I could be wrong. We'll see. Anyway. Uh, so it doesn't matter if the body is 50 or 75 healthy or racked with disease. Sinclair said, once that process has been triggered, the body will then remember how to regenerate and will be young again, even if you're already old and have an illness. Now, what that software is, we don't know yet. At this point, we just know we can flip the switch. So, well, he says, he says, jump, he's like, I have no idea, but it's there, essentially. Well, they've done, they've done it with. It's a long story. Let me jump ahead to what they actually did in the mice here. Um, I mean, this sounds like the ramifications are a lot bigger than it sounds like this is like curing cancer yeah. and solving. Well, there would be no more cancer if you can do right. this. Yeah. Right. And then we also get into, have you guys read Albert Brooks's book, 2030? No. No. From like, from like 10 years ago. It's like a, a future, a sort of a comedy, but just like a what if all these things happen in the next 20 years and the major event is someone cures cancer. And it just destroys the world and causes this war between the young and the old because the the old don't die. So they're just a burden on the economy and the young have no place in the workforce. So they're like militias of young people rising up against the old who they're mad at for not dying anymore. Mm. It's uh, it's pretty bleak, but I'm like, yeah, if suddenly aging was reversible, we would suddenly have a host of, of social problems we can't even wrap our heads around. I would still be all for we, it. We would just but, never uh, not have a boomer president. Yeah, he'd just be forever. <laughs> yeah, be for- but he would. But that boomer president would look like you know Andrew Garfield. It would, you know, yeah, it's but not gonna- but I mean, for like ten more election cycles, it would just be like fuck. But the concept like- of your chronological age wouldn't even mean anything if you can't judge someone physically from it. You could even hide but, it. By right? the way, like- Kirshen just sent the uh, the senogenics. Is that what it is, Matt? Yeah, this is the guy. I just texted it to you two as well. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah, yeah. 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 So that's the advert. You've seen it. You've I've definitely, definitely seen, it seen like I have Delta absolutely magazine. seen this. I've absolutely seen this. Wow. So, this so guy, just know that I know on, that I was once on the Hallmark Channel daytime show with that man. <laughs> Amazing. So he's on human he's on human growth hormones. Like that's yeah. He's on Yeah, I think basically learn. his his big secret is exercise and testosterone injections. Yeah. Yeah. It's 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 definitely doable. Yeah. It's just uh But again, he's still a, but, something... but he's still aging. He's not not aging. He's still aging. He's just fit. No, he just has muscles. There's yeah. something unnerving about an extremely fit elderly person. Uh like very muscular, you know, like a, it's like a some sort of ocean god situation. <laughs> You know, it's very the, Neptunian. The this, is Posi- this, is Posi- this is Poseidon. Yeah, this is Poseidon. Yeah, this right. is Poseidon Lord of the Sea right here. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's some, you know, he needs like a trident and a beard. There's just something. <laughs> there's something very weird to me. Um, not that. Not that in your life you should. It, it's not like anyone makes that conscious decision. Like I'm going to be old now. I'm going to let it go to shit. You know. Uh, so I mean, good on him, I guess. I don't know. It's just unnerving. It's always it's unnerving. Very unnerving. Not to judge. It is unnerving, uh, but also more than that. It's you know. It's like I don't know if you can build an entire 
industry out of basically I did a lot of exercise and, and got myself some uh, testosterone. Well, M- Matt, you were you were you were on te- you, you were on television on this with guy. this man. I mean, you guys are best friends now. You guys are BFFs. I mean, I, I was, I think, uh, and I and I had like previously shared that image. In, like I can't remember what the situation context was, but it was like a sort of joke. It, it was like I, I can't remember. It was like an early joke tweet ages ago of. Well, I can't even find now because it doesn't even archive that far back. But it was a, uh, it was something along the li- lines of like, look at what this treatment's done to this man. He's half blue. It was it was something <laughs> yeah, very yeah. very sophisticated. Like he, you know, he you can see a skeleton through half his body, and he's glowing. And it um, it wasn't he wasn't then, taking colloidal silver though. It wasn't because yeah. <laughs> but I had like I had like repeatedly mocked the existence of this man and his and his methods, and then suddenly found myself. <laughs> being, like, I was like, oh my god, you're the guy from the in- from the flight magazine. That's amazing. <laughs> I've seen you on. Also, uh, have you guys ever seen Matt Brock? I've Bro- seen you next to the best steakhouse in, in Chicago. <laughs> top 10 steakhouses steak to Brooklyn. visit in St. Louis? Yeah. <laughs> Before you die. Yeah, exactly. And cause you to die, yeah. Um, by the way, I'm, I'm, I'm going to post a link. I'm not going to ask you to watch and, this and sketch. And a half-done word search. You're, <laughs> yeah. like, you're the page before the half-filled-in word search. Uh, have you guys uh, ever seen Matt Bronger's sketch, Weight Smashers, when he was on Mad TV? Yes, I have. I think it's my favorite <laughs> Mad TV sketch. It's, um, I guess you can <laughs> spoil a joke by just telling it. So the picture, you, the picture you posted of this doctor is him doing the thing where these are the pants I used to wear. So he's holding them out to show how much bigger they were. And Matt was in this sketch where he's a guy who lost weight with weight smashers, and he keeps pulling his pants out and down, so his cock keeps coming out. And they have to be like, cut, cut, cut. He's like, what? I lost a lot of weight. It's like, no, you got to go out, not like. <laughs> it's just the dumbest. That's pretty funny. <laughs> it's it's really good. Oh my god, uh, that's pretty uh, stupid. That's funny. Anyway, get back on track. So let's talk about the mice for a second because it's interesting what they did. Yeah. So to test this theory. Uh, Sinclair began trying to fast forward aging in mice without causing mutations or cancer. Um, there was a mouse he started making when he was 39 years old. He said, I'm now 53 and we've been studying that mouse ever since. If the information, if, if the theory of information aging was wrong, then we would get either a dead mouse, a normal mouse, an aging mouse or a mouse that had cancer. And we got aging. Wait, I don't get why that's true. Okay. With the help of other assistants, Sinclair and his Harvard team have been able to age tissues in the brain, eyes, muscles, skin, and kidneys of mice. To do this, Sinclair's team developed ICE, short for inducible changes to the epigenome. Instead of altering the coding sections of the mice's DNA that can trigger mutations, ICE alters the way DNA is folded. The temporary fast healing cuts made by ICE mimic the daily damage from chemicals, sunlight, and the like that contribute to aging. Ice, ice mice at one year looked and acted twice their age. But now it was time to reverse the process. So Sinclair lab geneticist uh, Wan Chen Liu created a mixture of three or four Yamanaka factors, adult human adult skin cells that have been reprogrammed to behave like embryonic or pluripotent stem cells. Yamanaka factors definitely found, sounds like something Sci-fi. that someone just put, yeah, Oh, no, that, that, just that, that, was like said, in that was absolutely said on some Trek episode at some point. I was going to say, that's the <laughs> test you have to pass to become a first mate on Star Trek, yeah. Um, so the cocktail was injected into damaged retinal ganglion cells in the back of the eyes of blind mice and switched on by feeding mice antibiotics. God the damn antibiotic it, he doesn't have enough Yamanaka factors to make it. <laughs> Did it turn up the? She can't take any more Yamanaka, Captain. How crazy would it be, Matt? Like if you like three hundred years from the future, like you show up there and they're like, you know, according to the Kirshen effect, you're like, what? Wait, what? Tell me more about this. <laughs> it was, and it's just something deeply embarrassing. <laughs> like, it's just, you know, the Kirshen effect, where it's possible for someone to fart themselves to death under the right situation. <laughs> uh. So. So they gave him this antibiotic, <laughs> which is just a tool. They said it could be any chemical, really, just a way to sh- be sure that the, that the three genes are switched on. Um, normally, they're only on in very young developing embryos and then uh, turn off as we age. So these mice regained most of their eyesight. And next, the team tackled brain, muscle, and kidney cells and restored those to much younger levels, according to the study. So one of our breakthroughs was to realize that if you use this particular set of three pluripotent stem cells, the mice don't go back to age zero, which would cause cancer or worse. Instead, the cells go back to between 50% and 75% of the original age, and they don't stop and don't get any younger, which is lucky. How the cells know to do that, we don't yet understand, which is pretty bonkers and pretty awesome. Like, that's all I would want is, like, put between 50 and 75%. That's, uh, that would be a fucking gift. It's Um, so frustrating 
existing before a lot of inevitable cures, you know? But but yeah, again, I'm those inevitable cures. Also, well, right Jesse, now, would like you the- say the same thing? Like, you know, we don't we don't we 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 don't know what we don't know. And so, like, because I've had this argument with people in regards to the fact, too, is like, you know, oh, well, you know, imagine how so-and-so felt who was born in, you know, 1920 if they'd just been born 20 years later or whatever. But, I mean, I guess every... I mean, Jesse, you're a sort of perfect example of that. Like, you literally... The treatment that you had for cancer would not have been at the same level, what, like, a decade earlier. Absolutely. But a decade from now, it will seem medieval. Right. You know, I, I'm not talking about things like immortality. I'm talking about just that part of the article. Like, for right. instance, my, my dad has macular degeneration. He's he's going to go blind. Just right. reversing that. It, that doesn't that doesn't lead to overpopulation. It's just right, like right, it right, just right. fucking stop just macular good. degeneration. Yeah. You know what I mean, it sucks. Right. Well, like, so are you are a, you saying there is specifically are you guys saying, though, really quickly, though, that. You know, and, and obviously it is opening that Pandora's box in regards to the de aging processes of if, if the immortality conundrum, uh, in, in regards to a strain on our resources. But if, but if nobody, if nobody can die, what what do we do? You know, do we? Well, not not even immortality. Logan's run. Logan's run. We get Logan's run. We've seen this. <laughs> yeah. We know what we do. Yeah. Well, not this, even this immortality. By- like, I, you get you start getting into really weird, eth- okay, like the the Black Plague. You know, bubonic plague is treatable now with like doxycycline. Like it's like comically easy to treat. But I mean, that wasn't around and it killed like half of Europe. And where we'd be right now if that never happened is like the it just the world may be over if half of Europe didn't die then. I, you know, I don't know. Because of how much faster population would Yeah, yeah, that, because of, just... like, logarithmic population increase. I mean, because... Except we also don't know, like, the population bomb thing, as Matt and I know from that, I guess, <laughs> the, the population crisis might not be as crisis-y as, as some people have said it is, but... Uh, sure, uh, yes, sure. I, get I mean, I, I just... No, it's all, for me, it's all just um, very, like, armchair, seventh-grade yeah. stoner speculation. Right. You know, this is not based on any, to, uh, I, I any think, facts. I think overpopulation yeah. is to... less of a concern as a po- population density is a concern, because the thing is, is that if you have a strain on resources because so many people are living in a small amount of space, that's more concerning than the amount of people on the planet. Maybe, but yeah, Matt, go ahead and say. But Matt well, recommended gonna, uh, the best. Yeah, <laughs> there, uh, we, Andy and I both, uh, you know, a little podcast recommendation uh, mid episode unsolicited. But we're both enjoying the new podcast, "If Books Could Kill," which is basically every episode is about one of those that they frame it as like those airport bestsellers, uh, right? But you, you know, like the ones that are on the front table at the airport that are always like some sort of semi dodgy pop science or pop philosophy or something like that that they do a whole episode on free economics uh and there's one on the what was the what was the book called because it was huge in the 70s wasn't it the population bomb the population, bomb? The population bomb? bomb i think yeah the the episode that just dropped is about the secrets but they're they're fun hosts and they're, it's a good show and yeah, okay. the population thing that's in the news again because that same expert is now being cited he's just super alarmist about population stuff and when you dig into it, it's just one of those things that's not as commonsensical as you might think. And, and also, like, the, his version, it's weird. Well, it's not that weird, because it, it very much, you, this has happened many, many times in various guises all over the world, but it is one. Of, it's that classic story of someone who starts off approaching an issue from a ostensibly leftist position and very, very quickly ends up with eugenics and sure. enslaving people. Like, it's just like, <laughs> and what we need to do is is sterilize okay. everyone on this continent. Well, I, I <laughs> guess, like... like, the concept of overpopulation very much depends on what sort of world you want. Like, I don't... Here's how I... How do I word it? Like, I don't think we're approaching some thing where uh, the human population will be our demise. I don't think we're approaching some magic point there where oh there's not enough resources we can't do this we can no longer survive as a species um but like i think like deforestation sucks you know and and right right all these species yeah. going oh, extinct yeah. like well, like and, and that's the thing it like sucks. that book even they talk about it on the show is that that book has elements of that that is like that is correct and accurate and then it, but then he draw the conclusions he draws from and the solutions he proposes and also some of the things that he the 
wildly wrong extrapolation where, you know, he takes a graph and basically just extends it in a ridiculous way. He goes like, well, the population is doubling at this rate and this increase of rate. Um, and if it carries on like that for another 150 years, there'll be 200 billion people on the planet <laughs> and and metal will melt from the heat that they're giving off. You know, like, well, if that doesn't... You've completely ignored... The, the, so the many time, things. The time that thermodynamics takes... you've ignored. Right. You've ignored the idea right. that you know people. What when when it's when people don't have a square foot of their own to move around in, maybe they won't be able to procreate at the same level. Right. No, no, because they'll actually w- their bodies will have to be inside of other bodies just to survive. Right, just so they, <laughs> and then it's all sex. In, you know, and then may, it explodes may, maybe, again. Maybe the graph will start to tail off at a certain point when you reach those kind of levels, and also that's. You you can't also melt metal by getting too many people close to each other. Yeah, it's insane. Um, but also but, this um, this this even though his policy suggestions were insane, this book which came out over fifty years ago did lead to things like the China one child policy, which we still don't know the end result of. It's going to have so many downstream effects as that generation ages, and now we have. Because everyone wants a boy, we have this right. disproportionate number of males, yeah. and that and, and, and the also fact that it, not it didn't work because support... there's like way more than one child in China. There's like millions <laughs> yeah. of them. Yeah, but like, but we have yeah. an aging populace for the first time ever that outnumber the people before it. So this pyramidal shape of the of the aging cohort that is going to like wreak havoc because there's no young people to support this aging populace and way more men than women. Like all these problems that are downstream of what someone thought was a good plan based on this guy's alarmist ideas of overpopulation like, a, a guy who as the as the as the podcast explains was a butterfly researcher right, who was right. just giving this science a crack oh just it's, giving it a go oh no i mean so my my thing about it is i i don't think that we're approaching overpopulation for humanity's sake um but i think we're vastly overpopulated for say the giraffes you know what i mean so i i don't know wait what do you mean I I just mean like in order to have enough clear land for enough grain for enough food to to continue supporting our population at eight billion now, um, just a lot of stuff's going to go extinct and it's going to suck. It's yeah. it's a bummer. Although like right I don't, now I don't we think have we will perish. Yeah, and and right now we have plenty of like as the book or the podcast about the book says like there hasn't been a famine yet that's because globally there's a lack of food it's all resource allocation we have the resources right, right now to feed everyone on the planet no totally it's, totally it's fine yeah totally yeah um yeah it's it's much more sort of political effects and yeah. um and and localized Local. issues uh, yeah. yeah so so i think we got time to fit in one what uh, one more story for oh the matt we'll shifting do, off the famine talk pretty quick why what's going <laughs> well, on there what's well, going because on man? i've been trying to link to this for a while because you were talking about macular degeneration and and i think this sort of fits thematically I in was, there i was and, making uh, a potato famine joke and i'm sorry this oh, does this does sorry, I, I oh i didn't oh, get it either okay yeah, well, like we also we've explained this before that on the show that when 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 Britain was doing that to Ireland, uh, like most of my family were in Russia still going. Yeah. Maybe they'll learn to like Jews, and they uh, <laughs> <laughs> and they didn't. They didn't. So um, uh, we uh, we got we got a, a, an article suggestion that says might be a good one to bring Brooks back on for briefly. He used to slice retinas and all. He we did. have not he got sli- sorted sliced out up Brooks, but he certainly did. Sli- and this this. Email was signed. I don't know if this is a real. I get it was signed. Take care, dudes. Ted Theo Logan. So um, Esquire. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a pretty exciting person to be sending writing in. But this is all about eyes and macular degeneration and how some lab-grown retinal eyes make successful connections and open the door for clinical trials to treat blindness. This is reported on the website of the University of Wisconsin, okay. which, uh, Wisconsin-Madison, to give it its full name. Uh, this is Dr. David Gam, who's looking very nicely into camera while sh- well, he's got his arms folded, he's looking into camera while some other scientists are in the background doing science. It's mm-hmm. a he, solid he, headshot. He looks like an anti-aging expert, but he's not. He he really does, doesn't he? And he, he's also got piercing eyes. He looks like, you know, he knows his way around a, a cornea. Mm-hmm. So... <laughs> Retinal cells grown from stem cells can reach out and connect with neighbors, according to a new study, completing a, quote, handshake that may show the cells are ready for trials in humans with degenerative eye disorders. So, you know, maybe there's no hope for your dad here. But over a decade ago, researchers from the University of Wisconsin-Madison developed a way to grow organized clusters of cells called organoids that resemble the retina. 
which is the light sensitive set tissue at the back of the eye. Hmm. They coaxed human skin cells, reprogrammed to act as stem cells, to tr- develop into layers of several types of retinal cells that sense light and ultimately transmit what we see to the brain. So David Gam says, we. We wanted to use the cells from these organoids as replacement parts for the same types of cells that have been lost in the course of retinal diseases. But after being grown in a laboratory dish for months as compact clusters, the question remained, will the cells behave appropriately after we tease them apart? Because that's the key to introducing them into a patient's eye. So we've all had this before. Where we've introduced some cells into a patient's eye and they've just like, they've embarrassed us. Sure. Yeah, you know, you you bring them to an eye, thinking like, you know, that you're vouching for them basically when you bring them <laughs> along, and then they they get all drunk, they say some things to the hostess, clog the toilet. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's just a whole thing. It's a whole thing. It's just a bit shameful. So during 2022, Gam and U W Madison collaborators published studies showing that dish-grown retinal cells called photoreceptors respond like those in a healthy retina to different wavelengths and intensities of light, and that once they're separated from adjacent cells in their organoids, they can reach out towards new neighbors with characteristic biological cords called axons. Okay. And he says... The last piece of the puzzle was to see if these cords had the ability to plug into or shake hands with other retinal cell types in order to communicate. And this has been published, by the way, in the Proceedings of National Academy of Sciences. So check check that out. Get get right in there. So so these cells in the retina and brain communicate across synapses, which are tiny gaps in the tips of the cords, to confirm that the lab-grown retinal cells have the capacity to replace disease cells and carry sensory information like healthy ones, they needed to show that they could make synapses. So co-author Jin Yu Zhao, Zhao uh, who's a mass and uh, professor of neuroscience, who and work, uh, worked with the GAMS lab cells to help study their ability to form synaptic connections. They did this using a modified rabies virus to identify pairs of cells that could form the means to communicate with each other. What? What? Mayhem. Are you using... Are you bringing rabies into this now? The research team, which also includes grad students and co-first authors Alison Ludwig and Stephen Mayrell, broke apart the retinal organoids into individual cells, gave them a week to extend their axons, or Or they're out of here. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) You got one week! This is your last warning. We've been through this, Kachansky. Uh, make the, expose them to the virus and took the, and then took a peek. They took a peek. That's very. They took a little peek at it. Probably down. Probably down some kind of microscope. Sure. What they saw were many retinal cells marked by a fluorescent color, indicating a rabies infection had infected one across a synapse, uh, successfully formed between neighbors. So they're infecting one with rabies and then seeing if the other one gets infected. What? Just through. We've been. We've been quilting this story together in the lab one piece at a time, says Gam, to build confidence that we're headed in the right direction. And Gam pat- patented the organoids and co-founded Madison-based Opsis Therapeutics. I didn't even know you could. I didn't even know you could patent a Garage Band. Yeah. <laughs> the organoids. The organoids. <laughs> classic. I think the organoids classic sounds more Madison, like a Wisconsin. Post-punk. Yeah. 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 I feel like they're more of like a ska band. Oh, I can see that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, oh, hang, um, yes, we've oh, lost Michael. Second. Oh no, Michael. Uh, no, he's here. He's here. He's uh, he's listening. He's just um, his his mic got all his mic got weird. Yep. You see, uh, unbeknownst to the listeners at home, uh, we we also have a secret chat going on in the background where we can say stuff like uh, like Hey, can you guys hear me? You know, and stuff like that. And sometimes it's quite funny. You know, <laughs> so. They use the rabies second. virus to to see which cells could directly communicate. Which I I like that. I think that's cool. Uh, Michael, do we have you back? I, I hope so. Can you guys hear me now? We can hear we you. We can yes. loud and clear. Perfect. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. No, you, that's, you keep, uh, that's no did worries. We catch you. You're probably trying to talk a bunch of times, and then we just didn't hear you. We carried on talking. I just thought. I just thought you guys were just so like. This is so not relevant to the direction I'm trying to go with this. <laughs> no, like, not at all. That I just no. was like, I was like, wow. I was like, oh man, okay, all right. Well, maybe I'll sh- I'll just go make dinner. I don't know. I don't know what to do. No, <laughs> no. Uh, right now on this show, Michael, you're just a really, very you're fascinating. Really the of this one. <laughs> no, honestly, I don't. I don't know what happened. Honestly, I think like I just touched. So here's here's my problem with the the MacBook Air. 
uh, Pro, MacBook Pro Air, is that obviously it doesn't have the direct USB connection, so you have to have the USB adapters uh, to yeah. plug anything oh. in, and those things can periodically fall out, which is not fun. Uh, I can send yeah. you a link to I found a I found a direct cable that I'm now using that plugs in. No way. That go- that goes to I don't have to use the adapter anymore. I'll, I'm going to send you that link. Yes, that a... would be very very useful. Because it actually happened to me in Philadelphia. I was doing a live stream uh, live, and uh, as you do, and uh, yeah, that happened. Somebody just kind of walked by and slightly touched it. They didn't touch it. They I mean they like nudged it. They looked it at fell it. out, and the whole stream uh, went dead, which kind of sucks. Then Oof. you have to start all over again. Yeah. yeah. I kind of don't okay. want to ever upgrade my laptop because now I have the 2015 that's like uh, it's straddling these worlds because it still has HDMI, SD card, and regular USB. Yeah, me too. Me too. I also like I've I have software that just the more the actual OS itself updates, like the software won't work. Oh yeah, I've lost but programs when that happens. I, I I lost a bunch of stuff when I upgraded. And, and I've got some like expensive, quite expensive stuff that I don't want to lose because you know the companies have gone under or whatever, yeah. and <laughs> it's just you know that's it. It's over. You yeah. know what's not over though is people who've maybe got macular degeneration and might there be able go. to get their sight back <laughs> thanks there you to go. this. Look at that segue. Yes, I, I was thinking this was going to be an editing nightmare, so I apologize. Oh, no, it'll be easy. Okay. Nah. I'm going to leave all this in. That's how I edit it. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. We leave everything in. So, so after they confirmed the presence of synaptic connections, the researchers analyzed the cells involved and found that the most common types of retinas cells forming synapses were photoreceptors, rods and cones, which are lost in diseases like retinitis pigmentosa and age-related macular degeneration, as well as in certain eye injuries. So that's your that's what your dad's dealing with, right? It is. Yay, yay. Your rods and cones get all fucked up there. Yeah. Is he a bit avid listener to the organoids as well? Loves the organoids. Loves loves the organelles. Loves just the organs. (laughs) Yeah. So the next most common cell type, retinal ganglion cells, are degenerate in optic nerve cell di- nerve disorders like glaucoma. So, yeah, coming coming out of Wisconsin. Yeah, they're not just good for dairy products; they're also good for your rods and your cones, mm-hmm. your, rods your and ability your to see. Yeah, man, yeah, Madison's a cool town. I've still it never is. been there. I haven't been to Madison either. That's where um, isn't that where that that's where uh, Skyline is, right? Skyline. Uh, I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. I've never worked it. Yeah. Oh wait, wait, no, no. I think Skyline is the one up, um, like north of Green Bay, like uh, Apple, Appleton. Appleton, 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 yeah, Appleton. There yeah. it is. Sorry yeah, to everyone to at Skyline. Sorry to yeah. everybody at Skyline. There, no. Appleton's but there's another cool club too. in Madison I've heard, which I have not been to. Uh, maybe is it called something on Main? Common yes. on Main? I don't know. Yeah, I Hor- believe Horny so. on Main. Is it called Horny on Main? Is that possible? It's called Organelles <laughs> on Main. Is actually yeah, what yeah. it's called. Uh, it's comedy on State. Comedy, Comedy on State, state yeah. Okay. On account of oh, it's yeah, on so, State yeah. Street. Comedy on State, horny on Main. That's the Yes, <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. Um Michael. Yes. Where can our, our we we're, we're gonna finish the main episode and do an extra bonus story for the Patreon patrons, but Ooh. um where can our listeners find you and your podcasts and everything you do? Uh so um my lis- your listeners, my listeners, everybody's listeners can uh reach uh find me uh on all the platforms uh that are currently owned by Alden Monopolies. So uh, you can find uh, Inside the 18. It's a soccer podcast or football podcast, if you'd like to say, uh, on all the different platforms. Uh, you can also we also live stream on YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, uh, and then I also um, have a new social media network that I'm a co-founder in for niche communities. Uh, the first one we launched is a goalkeeping community, and that is not for people that are looking to uh, keep their goals in life. It is for the the football <laughs> goalkeeper. Uh, so that is that is that. If it if you do have uh, you know some goals that you want to keep in life and you want to engage on on the forum, feel free. Uh, some people might be very confused, but hey, you might get some <laughs> valuable information too. So so do those and all, and also you're you're a co-host. That's one of the things. One of the the last episode of the year, we were talking about things we enjoyed and media that we enjoyed and shows we particularly enjoyed. But one of the things I left off was that. Uh, Holly and I both got we got season tickets for Angel City FC, which is the new LA women's football team, and uh, one of the best things we did last year. And one of your co the co host of one of your shows is is an owner of or is an yes, so she, she, she's she's an owner. She's a World Cup winner. She's a gold medalist. Damn. She is a uh, she's a broadcaster for CBS Paramount. 
Um, and uh, yeah, I don't know why she's there either um, with me, but I think it's because I bought this H6 microphone, and she's like, you know what, this this looks pretty professional. I'll handle this. I can do this. <laughs> that that, that thing's never doing. gonna get bumped. To, to be what... quite to be quite honest, she was a guest during like right before the pandemic hit. Then the pandemic hit, and she had nothing else to do, so just kept coming on every week, and then it just became a thing. So nice. Yeah, it's opened up a lot of doors for me. I'll tell you that. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. yeah. So so get on those. You can find us. Probablyscience.com is the website. That's where we post all the show notes and the episodes and also our links to the Patreon and PayPal donation pages. Thank you very much, everyone who helps keep the show go that way and also who helps spread the word and tell people about us. I'm really... Those aren't... Wor- that's bad grammar. But <laughs> you, we've been doing this for long enough and if you're still that's, listening to the yeah. show, you'll you'll... That's not even in the top 50 least professional things we've done. Yeah, I think so. You can also find us on Twitter at probably science individually at Annie T. Wood, at Jesse Case, and at Matt Kirshen. Probably science at gmail.com is the email address for any questions, comments, clarifications, and stories you would like us to cover. And Michael, again, thank you so much for joining us. And listeners, thank you so much for tuning in. And we will see you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.